Hello and welcome back to the Cinema Tirana YouTube channel where we take a look at media and the world around us through a Christian perspective. It is important to be discerning and thoughtful of the media that we intake as Christians. And here uh, I'm going to give you some tools to understanding the new Disney movie Encanto. Uh, this movie has taken the world by storm, super popular as most Disney movies are. Uh, just recently was released on Disney Plus and gained a lot more media attention uh, than its initial theater release. In fact, I wasn't even going to make a video until I saw just how popular this film was. And there's a lot of things in this film that us as Christians should be aware of, especially when it comes to showing this movie to kids. I'm not going to give a overall thumbs up or thumbs down on the movie, nor tell you what you should do uh, when it comes to showing your kids this film. I'm gonna just give you some guidelines and some thoughts to think about when it comes to uh, movies like this. Um, let's start with the good things about this movie. Uh, Disney movies are always technically really great. The animation is absolute A-class. They are industry leaders. Um, the visuals are stunning. The music's always incredible here, Lin-Manuel Miranda really popular songwriter for Broadway and in movies, uh, does a great job. The movie overall as a technical art piece is really impressive. This movie also tackles a lot of family themes, a lot of family dynamics that can be unhealthy, a lot of introspection on personal struggles by the characters, which can all be a really good tool uh, to communicate to kids. The complexities of family life. The message in the end of the film I think is is totally fine for a Christian perspective. Uh, values of family is really important, especially in this day and age. Something that may be seen as positive, and I think uh, generally it's a pretty good positive, is its portrayal of Hispanic and specifically Colombian culture. This could be a good cultural experience for kids um, to get a sense of the way uh, other cultures operate and to step outside of their own maybe specific bubble. It's also a, a, a good way to have us fellow Latinos be represented on screen, which is important in f forming uh, identity, especially in young kids. Now we can talk about the complexities of uh, the identities being portrayed on screen. Um, I'll get into that, but I think overall using this film as an example of how vast the family of God is around the world can be uh, beneficial for uh, Christians and uh, the young ones as well. That being said, there are things that I think we should be aware of and weary um, in films like this. So the movie Encanto, um, its title means enchantment and um, it's a very magically uh, loaded term. Disney overall always engages with some kind of magic. Sometimes it's uh, relatively harmless, but other times uh, it could stray into territory that might make us a little queasy uh, while watching. So we can start with the small things in this movie that we might want to look out for. Um, this would be stuff like the house. Uh, the house in which most of this movie takes place is um, inhabited or you could say um, has magical powers imposed um, into it, uh, has a personality. Um, it's not dark or scary for the most part. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's like a, a haunted house per se, but in, a, in, in one sense of the word it is. This can be uh, kind of the first challenge in viewing this film. Uh, if you're a Christian looking to uh, give your kids a wholesome viewing experience. Uh, another minor thing to note is the character Bruno. Uh, he's kind of this dark shadowy figure who uh, is revealed to not be so bad by the end of the movie. Uh, the issue with that character is that he um, he's a fortune teller in a sense. Um, his gift is that he can see the future. Um, there is a scene in which he um, and the main character, Mirabelle, take part in this kind of uh, 
seance ritual to see the future. Um, it's not super explicit or uh, in its satanic imagery. Um, and, you know, it's kind of played in that cartoon magic style. Um, it could really put off a lot of uh, Christian viewers, so that's up to your own um, your own convictions about what you should be watching on screen. So that's just a basic kind of warning about that. Um, I will say it's definitely not the worst <laughs> uh, version of contacting the spiritual realm that you could possibly see on the movie. But um, it is something to be aware of. Now the film deals a lot with magic. Magic isn't always uh, necessarily an indicator of uh, malicious supernatural, supernatural intentions behind the film. You can think of movies like The Lord of the Rings or The Chronicles of Narnia. They engage with uh, magic, but the magic's origin in this specific world uh, comes from the high, a higher creator. And it's allegorical of the way uh, God works in our world. With Disney movies, typically the magic is centered around some kind of natural object or thing. Uh, this is where it becomes problematic. And um, this kind of pseudo-pagan magic that centers around naturalism uh, can be seen as a real issue. This movie specifically kind of walks the line um, and is very vague about where the magic in this house comes from. So it could be an interesting discussion to have with kids over what their feelings were, what their convictions were, what is maybe the Holy Spirit telling them uh, about the supernatural powers portrayed in this movie. But uh, now let's get to the things that I think are red flags when viewing this movie from a Christian perspective. So a way you can discern uh, a movie's intentions in terms of its uh, supernatural element are the way it portrays traditional Christian imagery in its movies. This would include the portrayal of churches, uh, priests, um, objects of religious worship, uh, depending on what Christian uh, tradition you come from. This could include icons, uh, rosaries, uh, the elements of communion, etc, etc. And here, uh, since the movie's set in Colombia, the Catholic tradition has had a firm place since the beginnings of South America. And the film doesn't shy away from this. Where the issue takes place is the way that the priest character is portrayed in the movie. The priest character um, is portrayed as a phony and subservient to the characters of the main family that have special supernatural powers. The way the film does this is by uh, a small kind of throwaway, throwaway line in a song where the priest mentions that he has lost all his hair and he is wearing a toupee. So this is kind of played for jokes and I don't wanna cause too much alarm by looking into a small detail, but I think it's it's definitely important when we're being uh, discerning of media to look at every single aspect because every single aspect of the film is incredibly thought out by multiple groups of people. So here, uh, a man who's supposed to be God's representative on earth is portrayed as someone being intentionally misleading by wearing uh, a toupee. Now, this might seem funny, but um, the way supernatural evil manifests itself in movies is by getting something sacred and inverting it upside down. Um, this is most importantly seen in the doors of the house. So in the movie, every member of the family has a supernatural door that leads into their room. And these doors um, look exactly like icons. So if you come from a Christian tradition where icons are incredibly important in your liturgy and form of worship, then you're going to be familiar with this. But to uh, more Protestant viewers, icons are uh, depictions of saints, 
or um, biblical scenes or uh, legends of saints that are used in veneration and seen as a window into heaven. Here the doors are uh, replacing saints with the members of the families and also operate as portals into supernatural realms. So in many ways these are exactly icons, but since they're not God-centered, either reflecting saints who reflect God or reflecting Jesus who reflects who is in himself the glory of God, it reflects these members of the supernatural family who have been endowed with spiritual power by this kind of suspi suspicious magical element. Uh, this is this gave me the most chills personally as to um, the spiritual forces manifesting themselves behind this movie. Um, especially in the door that leads to Bruno's room. Uh, the door is dark. Um, it's very satanic in the way that it represents itself. And just the fact that it's also trying to represent an icon um, is that inversion of good into evil that we see in a lot of films. The way Church is also portrayed in the movie is that um, the character Louisa, who, whose uh, supernatural power is strength, can literally pick up churches and move them. Now, it doesn't seem like a big deal because she's just picking up a building, but it also is another indication that in this world, uh, these supernatural humans are able to um, subvert and uh, overpower the church in a certain way. Um, these are all really intense symbolic meanings in movies that we have to be aware of as Christians and um, everyone has their own convictions of where to draw the line in these specific films. Now, by no means am I saying that everybody who worked on this movie is a Satanist or anything like that, that there is actual evil intention behind this film. With movies like this, there are literally hundreds and hundreds of people working on every aspect and element that you see on screen. It's incredibly well thought out. And I'm 100% sure that there are and were Christians moving, uh, working on this film as it was being in, uh, developed. So if you're one of those people, feel free to let me know in the comments about uh, the background of this movie. I would love to get a high, uh, a look behind the curtain. But when large groups of people begin to create art, um, inevitably there's going to be good and evil um, spiritual forces behind uh, such large endeavors. So it's important to look at the symbolic meaning behind movies when discussing uh, meaning and what's being portrayed on screen. So. That's about it for the movie Encanto. If you want to see more reviews uh, looking at the symbolic meaning and um, looking at a critical view of movies and media through a Christian lens, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments. Um, if you disagree with me, by all means, let me know down below. We can have a thoughtful, uh, cordial discussion over the movie. If this has been helpful to anybody, please share it um, as we're all Christians trying our best, and especially those of us raising children. Um, we are always looking to protect and guide uh, kids in the way that they should go. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one.